Okay, chemistry students, today we're going to be talking about a, um, a concept called hydrates, and we're going to talk about how this is related to the mole and how we can use grams to turn into moles to figure out what's going on with hydrates. And so, if we look at this picture here on the screen, we have two chemicals. Um, the one on the top, as you can see there, the one on the top is a, a nice blue, uh, you know, crystalline substance, and the one on the bottom is a nice red crystalline substance, really, really uh, striking colors and stuff like that. And the interesting about these two substances is they're exactly the same. They are both cobalt 2 chloride. Both of them are. They're both the same exact chemical. And so you might ask, how can they both be the same exact chemical if, um, if, if they look so different? And um, the reason is one is a hydrate and one is not a hydrate. Um, the red one here is actually a hydrate. What that means is it has water molecules attached to it. Each crystal has six water molecules attached to it. And the one on the top is just cobalt 2 chloride, and it, it, it is, we've taken away all the water molecules. We've, uh, and we'll talk about how we do that here in a moment. So this is really what we're talking about when we talk about hydrates, these crystals, um, these little crystals of ionic compounds that have waters attached to them. Um, here's a really good example of what a hydrate is. It's Epsom salts. Um, Epsom salts are magnesium sulfate. MgSO4, magnesium sulfate, and they typically um, are hydrates, meaning they have water molecules attached to each one of those Epsom salt or those magnesium sulfate molecules. And it turns out in the Epsom salt molecule, it's typically seven um, water molecules per one magnesium sulfate. So that's that's a real life application of it. Epsom salt are used for are for a number of things. Um, they use them as a soaking aid. They call so people have really sore muscles. They might put some Epsom salts in a hot bath and, and soak in it. They're used as plant nutrients. Um, sometimes plants need some sulfur in, in the ground, things like that. Um, and a laxative as well. So what is this, this, this idea of a hydrate that we're talking about? So let's give us a, a definition. So a hydrate is going to be a salt plus a water molecule, usually in a crystal. Now, what we're talking about when we talk about salts is we're just basically talking about an ionic compound. And as you remember, an ionic compound is always just a metal plus a non-metal. Or non-metals, um, more than one can occur. Um, and we also have water attached to these guys in a crystalline form. And, and it's, if you just leave it out, it's not going to evaporate off like you would think water that would evaporate off um, if you spilled some on the desk, it's not going to happen that way. So let's first talk about um, how do we calculate the molar mass of a, of a hydrate, because that's an important thing to know how to do. So we're going to use the copper sulfate example, CuSO4. Um, and this is called a copper sulfate pentahydrate. The penta refers to the 5 right there. Now, um, when we're going to calculate the molar mass, of this, we're going to calculate the molar mass of the copper sulfate just like we'd always would. It, we we can identify that there's one copper, so it's going to be one times um, copper's molar mass, which is 63.55, and that's for copper. We can see that they, we have one sulfur, so we're going to add in one sulfur, one times um, 32.09, and that's for our sulfur. Um, and then we're going to add in. We have four oxygens, so 4 times 16. Now, here's the trick with hydrates, and this is something we have to keep in mind. Um, the way we write hydrates is we use this dot right here. Now, normally, in a, as, as I wrote down in my, in my equation below, we think of that dot as multiplying, but really it's not. It just means that there's going to be five, there are five water molecules within um, within this hydrate. So don't think that you're going to multiply this value in. You still have to add. Okay, So we're going to add it in and what we do is we calculate the molar mass of water. Now the molar mass of water is going to be two hydrogens, which is two, plus one oxygen, which is sixteen. Um, so And we have five of these guys, so we're going to go five times eighteen point oh two. Now the five comes from the five that's right here. And of course, the 18.02 is the molar mass of water. So that's the way we calculate the molar mass of hydrates. And uh, let me pull out a calculator real fast and we'll get you the answer there. Okay, so I ran that through my calculator and I come up with 
grams um, per mole for our molar mass of our copper um, sulfate pentahydrate. Now, um, that's not the end of this, this idea. Um, we can get rid of, we can get rid of um, the waters if we want to. And so if we have, again, the same molecule and we want to get rid of these waters, we do what we always want to do when we get rid of water, just like if you want to get rid of water on wet clothes, is you just add heat. And what will happen is heat will cause the waters to be given off as water vapor. And um, then we'll be, left with, um, we'll be left with just copper sulfate. And oftentimes that causes a color change. And that's what we saw in that very first example. Now, um, when we have, let me erase this real quick here. When we have um, a hydrate that has lost its water because of heat, like all we have is copper sulfate left, we call this an anhydrate or anhydrous, sometimes it's called, either way. Now, this, this word anhydrate, kind of we think about it, an means without, and hydrate, as we now know, means water. So an anhydrate is without water, and a hydrate is with water, okay? So whenever we do calculations involving, um, involving these types of things, which is what we're gonna be doing today in, in a lab, we, we have a couple things that we're looking for. One we're looking for, we know that we have a hydrate. This is with the water. We know we have an anhydrate now. And this is without water. And we know we're going to give off the water. Now, the two really important ideas, or the two really important values that we need, is we're going to need the anhydrate value, and we're going to need the water value. We're easily given the hydrate with water, but these are the two values that are going to be used in the calculation that's coming up next. So let's take a look at that calculation really quickly here. Okay, so we have a, here's our example here, and this is a typical example of a hydrate problem, and, and we're going to take a look at this in a lab as well. And so we have a 13.52 gram sample, and that's actually grams, um, of magnesium sulfate and this, this star here is going to tell us this is just that that's my dot. Um, but they don't, they're not telling us this N means that we don't know how many water molecules there are in this. It's an unknown. That's okay. We heat it up and there's no water left. Okay, so all the water is given off. So after heating the mass of the anhydrate magnesium sulfate is 6.60 grams. Okay, so we have a before mass and an after mass. It says, what is the value of N, or how many water molecules are present per one formula unit of magnesium sulfate? Okay, so we can figure this out. So step one here, what we're going to do in step one is we want to find the mass of the water given off. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with our mass of our hydrate. and the mass is 13.52 grams, given to us in the problem up there. And we're going to subtract out the mass of the anhydrate, which was 6.60 grams. Now when we subtract those two, what we get is the mass of the water that was given off. And we can't me directly measure that because it just evaporated up into the atmosphere as gas, and we can't, we can't measure that. So we get 6.92 grams of water. That's step one. We always want to find the mass of the water. Step two, what we want to do is we want to convert grams of water to moles of water. And we know how to do that using our mole road. So our known becomes 6.92 grams of water. That value was found right there. Okay, so that's grams of water. And we're going to convert it to moles of water. And if we look at our mole road, we know that one mole over the molar mass of the substance or atomic mass gives us um, our answer. And so we're going to calculate the molar mass of water here. So we have two hydrogens, which is two, plus 16 for oxygen. So it's 18.02. Once again, this is the atomic mass or the molar mass of water. 
from the mole rows. So we're going to divide these two values. And so what I do is I go ahead and punch this through my calculator, and I um, get 0 0.384 moles of water. Go to three sig figs because, hey, um, my nose is three sig figs. All right, number three. What we're going to do is we're going to convert our mass of our anhydrate to moles. Okay, so up above, it was given to us in the problem, and I can see it right there. There's my anhydrate value, 6.60 grams, and that is of copper sulfate. Oh, made a little mistake there. It's not copper sulfate, it's magnesium sulfate. That, that would definitely give me a different answer. Okay. And so what we're going to do, like I said, we're going to convert it to moles. Put moles on top. Um, and whenever we go from grams to moles on the mole road, it's always one mole over the molar mass of the substance. So we're going to calculate the molar mass of magnesium sulfate. Um, my calculations show it's about 120.38. Okay, so we divide those two values, and um, we get a, a pretty small number. It's going to come out to be 0 0.0548 moles of magnesium sulfate. Let's scroll down here a little bit. Okay, now we have two values, so we're, up, we're on to step number four here. So step number four is what we're going to do is we want to find the ratio of moles of water to moles of our anhydrate. I think I spelled anhydrate right there, so let me correct that really quickly. Okay, so moles of water we calculated before. I'm going to kind of scroll up a little bit here and find it. Okay, there's my moles of water right there. We calculated moles of water. So it's 0.384 moles. And then we're going to plug in moles of our anhydrate, 0 0.0548. And we're going to divide these two. And when I divide these two, I get a value that is extremely close to 7. 0.384 divided by 0 0.0548. I got 7.007. So that, that gets me about as close to 7 as possible. Now that gives me my idea of who N is in that formula. And oops, 7 jumped down there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and take my formula, which is MgSO4. N H2O. That was what it was originally given to me. We're trying to find it, and I'm going to erase the N, and I'm going to plug in the 7. So that lets me know for every magnesium sulfate there are 7 waters. Okay? And that is how we calculate um, hydrates, unknown hydrates, when we're given to them. And now we know how to calculate those and molar masses of hydrates. Um, and we're going to have a, a worksheet on this, and we'll have a lab on this as well.